This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. Let's move on to our post-game chart book, which this week is titled Retracements or New Trends. Listeners, you find the download link in your Research Roundup email. If you don't have a Research Roundup email, just go to our homepage, macrovoices.com, and click the red button that says Looking for the Downloads. Patrick, what is it, retracement or a new trend? Well, isn't that the uh, single biggest puzzle piece to solve right now? I mean, uh, we heard uh, Charlie and others uh, talk about this idea that we could have markets that remain weak for even several more months before putting in a bottom. But we're at a really interesting moment where we have met all the criteria of a market correction. We've been correcting, you know, 15 plus percent. It's been several months of market correction. Typically, uh, markets get oversold enough, especially if you think about all the headlines that could have caused the market to have a liquidity event to the downside and it didn't happen and so there's an increasing chance that there's going to be some sort of counter trend rally but we're coming to the real important pivot if uh, that 4400 level while here i it's a convergence of both the uh, 200 day and the 50 day moving average it's also the fib retracement of the last drop as well as where there's a gamma flip zone sitting right in there so many um key uh, levels right in this pocket. And uh, uh, we certainly have seen the first reaction be up on the, uh, the Fed. But what will be interesting to see is whether or not the bulls have the, uh, the gas in the tank to punch the 4,400 level on the upside. I think really above there, we can start to approach this market in a much more neutral manner. I don't know how bullish I want to be the market, but certainly uh, a break above 4,400 would uh, mean that there's going to potentially be more up side follow through and a lot of relief from a very oversold state. And so uh, I'll be watching that very closely going into next week. Let's move on to currencies. On page three, we've got the euro US dollar cross. Yeah, well, we talked about the dollar and the current pullback. And what we had was a pretty oversold euro that was pretty much driving the the dollar strength. And we're seeing the euro getting a much needed bounce coming up toward its retracement zones and that 50 day moving average also lying around that 112 level. There was a substantial consolidation of the euro in the 112 to 113 zone. And uh, that's kind of like a fair value zone that's been uh, uh, establishing a base. Often, uh, when trends are in play, uh, that those levels become resistance. And so while the euro very much uh, is likely to strengthen towards 112, what it does as it approaches that level is going to be the big tell. Uh, if uh, the primary U.S. dollar bull trend is intact, uh, then that sh- the euro should have a very hard time beating those levels. And if we see signs next week that it's rolling over, then it'd be a little early or premature to write off the dollar. But on page four, we have that U.S. dollar Japanese yen chart. And really, um, the U.S. dollar has been actually in a big trade range against the yen for a better part of six months. And it was last week that we actually saw a bullish U.S. dollar breakout out of the, uh, from the yen at that level. And that, uh, that again, is just creates a little more further confusion amongst all the major cross currencies as to uh, what will the prevailing dollar trend uh, be. I mean, it really looks like one big mess and it may take weeks to really determine if the dollar bull trend can continue here. Patrick, let's move on to page five where we've got the gold futures chart. Is it put a bottom in or we head it back up or is that just a little dead cat? Well, I know you've uh, shared at the uh, market wrap your disappointment in uh, in gold's reaction overall, but uh, I'm not so sure I'm ready to take your view. I think that after a very long and extended basing formation, gold is just starting to show signs of coming to life. And uh, and the, the more it works, the more likely it is that uh, more money flow will keep coming here. So I'm not ready to take a, a negative view on here. But what is interesting is, is that uh, whenever you 
have a big meaningful breakout like this, what usually happens is all of the previous highs act like support. And you can see as that 50 day moving average is coming in toward 1900 and all those previous highs that rejected near 1900 uh, over the course of last year, um, it, we're going to get a real big tell. If gold is going to remain bullish, it will hold the line here. And, 19, and shouldn't, we shouldn't see any price action on any sustained basis below 1900. And so I think that watching here as to whether this was just a quick little profit taking washout, if the bulls can quickly get this north of 2000 by next week, uh, there's still room for 21, 2200 on the upside. And once uh, gold, uh, if the circumstances are there, that gold makes 52 week new highs, I think uh, it will start getting a lot of press and that in itself could drive further money flow. But Eric, I want to move on to page six, where I have that crude oil chart. And then I know we were just talking about this even uh, before we started recording, just in terms of what's next here for crude. And while it was an incredibly violent market correction, uh, you know, 30 plus dollars in a span of a week on the downside, in the bigger context, there is a primary uptrend. And we've basically given back half of the gains that were made uh, in the oil advance, arguably, if oil here is able to hold the line, particularly in my mind, get above levels around 110, 115, if we can get back above there, uh, then uh, I, I still think that the primary trend may still be higher moves. But uh, here, at least a bounce toward 110 is likely. Uh, but a lot of really interesting uh, things that could potentially develop here. What's, what levels are you watching on oil? Patrick, I think the chart on page six gives us a great visual reference for this, because if you look at that chart, you can see from the beginning of 2022 to the 1st of March, there's a nice, steady rally. And my expectation before the whole Russia tension came up had been that that would continue on approximately that trajectory. And if you just visually extend that, you can see that it moves up above 100 bucks and continues substantially higher than that. I wouldn't be surprised by the time of the summer is over if we had challenged the $147 previous all-time high set back in 2008. Then we had this great big bubble up in reaction to the first wave of Russia and Ukraine tension. First of all, we had people a week ago threatening to use nuclear force against one another. Uh, I think the biggest geopolitical risk moment since the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, just happened last week, and now everybody's acting like, okay, it's over, we've forgotten about it. I think that was just the first round. So first of all, I think we're back down, or we were back down when we uh, hit the low 90s over the last couple of days. We got back down to where the existing trend line should have been before this whole Russia tension came in. That gave justification for institutional longs to start to get back into the market. And I think that it's going to be a continued slow grind higher from here, punctuated by sudden spikes much higher very quickly if we get more tension in the geopolitical space, which I think is quite likely. So I think there's a uh, Plenty of room to make an argument for modest upside from here or huge upside, depending on what happens geopolitically. All right. Well, listen, I wanted to just highlight on page seven here with uranium. And what's interesting is whether it was gold, whether it was oil or whether it's uranium, what we had was very strong breakouts. And the last week defined a very deep and, uh, and meaningful market correction of that trend. You can see in the same manner, we've got a correction coming back to some key support lines approaching those moving averages. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see whether all of these commodities behave in the same manner. I don't have the chart here of wheat or other commodities, but many of them have done the same thing over the past week. And so uh, every rally tends to be checked. There there's always profit-taking cycles. There's always little squeezes to wash out weak hands and all sorts of types of price behavior that is characteristic of markets. Uh, but after this type of a market correction, it'll be so curious whether all of these commodities can put together a rally into next week. Patrick, let's move on to page eight, where we've got the Chinese A50 stock index. Why are we looking at Chinese equities suddenly? Well, what was interesting was that uh, really going into um, uh, the start of this week, China really accelerated to the downside. Their stock market was actually just an, almost a, a started an outright uh, 
plunge. I mean, we were down, you know, 20 percent almost in a span of just two weeks on the China A50. And it really looked like um, that things were sort of unraveling there. And then came in uh, the uh, whatever it takes moment. It seems that the, some people have been suggesting with uh, China wanting to do an intervention. And it led to a, a pretty solid and meaningful turnaround, one day turnaround. And uh, one of the things that I'm uh, going to be very curious about into next week and what I'm going to be watching is whether the market participants buy it and whether and that was enough to put in uh, a bottom and a trend reversal in China or whether this was just an oversold condition that was just due for one of these types of reactions and and the selling will ensue again. There's a, obviously a catalyst now for a turn. It'll be really interesting to see whether the bulls can follow through on this and, and uh, start to meaningfully turn this trend. Patrick, on the next several slides, there's a sequence of charts which are all the sector ETFs. What are they telling us? Yeah, I just really wanted to kind of um, have a conversation about what's happening uh, under the hood in terms of which parts of the markets are moving and not. What was uh, really interesting is is that uh, over the last month, uh, really some heavier selling came in U- uh, the U.S. financial sector. And what's really interesting is um, the last few days have seen a pretty uh, significant and meaningful bounce there. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be watching here is whether the financials uh, really did begin a new uh, sequence of, of a downtrend that could potentially be the market that uh, continues to drive potential corrections. Uh, you know, like, like we were saying, Charlie and Joseph and others were talking about the potential for weakness going in for several more months to the downside of equities. One of the things that you'll see is that we would see in those circumstances where financials on these types of bounces would fail right here as they approach uh, these retracement zones and these moving averages be really interesting to see whether or not they roll over and sell again or whether or not they come right back into their trade ranges and it's certainly one of the uh, one markets I think is worth watching another interesting thing to observe is on page 10 where we have the healthcare ETF we've seen a lot of the biotechs and healthcares doing very poorly during this whole market correction. And what it seems to be is money is now uh, finding a lot of these defensive sectors, whether it's this healthcare sector now trading uh, at uh, uh, almost two-month highs, uh, breaking and reversing on the upside. But even if you take the utilities index on page 12, what we're seeing is a lot of those most uh, defensive parts of the market actually getting a certain uh, amount of this money flow. And, uh, And the question is can we have a bigger or more meaningful stock market rally when the leadership is actually the defensive sectors rather than the uh, the growth sectors? And uh, I, I don't know. There's a, to me, it's a bit of a red flag, and it's one of those things where uh, where I'd, I'd want to see uh, to have a high conviction on the whole market. I'd want to see the, uh, more broader participation beyond these defensives. Uh, on page 11, just uh, circling back here. The interesting thing was that as this rush escalation occurred, the aerospace and defense sector initially took a very bullish breakout, uh, heading right back to 52-week highs, but it's really stalled out and, and retraced, looking very similar to a lot of the commodity charts that we have had on and, and before. And will be really interesting to see whether the new global defense spending causes a, a bullish uh, run in this aerospace defense sector. Uh, one of the interesting things for me is, is that it should really hold the line where we put in those lows around 105. If this is a, a level where this place uh, turns, uh, it'll be interesting to see whether they can attempt 52-week highs later this week. But the one I wanted to finally just wrap up with here is just looking at the uh, gold miners on page 13. So the interesting thing, Eric, here about the gold miners ETF is that while gold and silver have had relatively deep pull backs. What is particularly interesting is that many of the gold miners have actually for for once held up and dug in. And it's interesting that uh, like we're almost back to the trade ranges where gold miners were consolidating near this kind of 38, 39 level just a week ago. And so what's interesting is that even though gold itself has pulled back, these gold miners seem to be getting a lot of attention here. And uh, it'll be really interesting to see whether they'll be able to hold this new bull trend uh, going into that window. 
Listeners, if you enjoy Patrick's chart decks, you can get them every single day of the week with a free trial of Big Picture Trading. You can find the information on page 15 or at bigpicturetrading.com. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.